Over the past two decades, Carlos Sosa, aka DJ Sneak, has crafted a unique sound that has gone on to spawn whole genres and enrapture a generation of DJs and producers. Though perhaps little is known about him other than his Chicago roots, his love of cooking, and those strong opinions, we wanted to dig deeper and find out where this unique sound and gangster outlook comes from. So throughout summer 2013, we followed him across Ibiza, speaking with the man himself and those who know him best. Expect beats, grooves, grilling, and of course, a whole load of jacking. Musically, he's gone, he's gone full circle. It was his tunes that flipped me a little bit. Being the pioneer of house music as far as I'm concerned. And Nick has been around from the get-go. He's pure in his own form. Still these days, I'm a big fan of his DJing and his music. You know, everybody's got their way and Snoop definitely has his way. For me, he's like one of the guys that really inspired me for my style, you know. You know, he's influenced Daft Punk, so... Nick! Thanks for uh, having us here at your, dare I say, gangster's paradise. <laughs> your house gangster's paradise here in Ibiza. Good to um, have you. Yeah, good, good to have you too. So what made you decide to, to move out here for the summer? Well, um, I've been coming here since 1995, every summer. Oh, this, this year I felt like there was a lot more happening here, and musically especially, in my kind of style of music. Also, it's easy for me to jump from here to Europe and do festivals like Tomorrowland and things like that. Yeah. So it, it became a very good base. When did it all start off for you? You were born in Puerto Rico, grew up in Chicago. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Um, 13 years old, my parents decided to move to Chicago. By the summer of 84, I was like when I first started hearing music and then and that's when I was listening to like Planet Rock and Kraftwerk and all kinds of things that I, I know now. Back in the day, I had no idea what the name was. And, and sh musically, Chicago was just opening up with all this music. I worked at record stores and working record stores was kind of getting gigs around Chicago. So I, read, you know, I was Carlos at the hip house and you used to come and buy your music for me yeah. before I was DJ Snake, uh, which allowed me to just get every piece of vinyl I've ever touched. I was like, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's mine. mine. That's there was one guy in particular, his name was uh, Bad Boy Bill. He's still around today. And that, that was my first influence, was making jacking ghetto tracks. Bra, nasty, whatever. You know what I mean? And and he was sort of a guy who would play it. By 91, 1991, I got taken to an underground in Chicago and that's when I seen Derek Carter, Mark Farina, Spencer Kinsey. Everything about the scene was already going. I was brought to this like lost party and, and I completely lost it. Like I just stood there and I was like, oh my God, this is the type of music I love or like I want to get into. That whole night changed my, 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 the rest of my, the way I was making music and the way I think about music and everything. Um, I'll never yeah. forget that night. known Carl for quite some time now. <laughs> yeah, for a long time. Yeah. So maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that relationship and playing for space. Well, I mean, uh, when you get asked to, to play uh, a night that's been around for 14 years, you say yes. <laughs> you know, and this year I was able to get two gigs out of it, which is awesome. Awesome for for many reasons. I mean, I think Carl knows too that I'm it, it's sort of bringing back whatever's still good, you know what I mean? And, and we've always had that open relationship. And uh, 
And the thing with Sneak is that you, you cannot mistake his, his music and his sound. It's got so much funk, soul, energy, passion, power. It's incredible. He's pure in his own form. He really is, you know. And also, he's a really technically gifted DJ, especially, like I say, when I first seen him in Kareem in 1996, all the other guys could barely, barely mix. Like, if, if that, you know, they were scraping two tunes together, sneaking get up three decks, bang it out, showing the boys how it's done, and like, like he does today. quite home there, on the terrace, in the terrace, I should say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I remember playing space when, when it was open air, you know, and um, when, when the terrace was the terrace. The room commands a certain power and takeover. I love that. I love to, to have some sort of playground that I feel like, oh, I don't have to think about this gig, I just have to show up and play. No matter how much he, he gets noticed or not noticed, or how much he's making or not making, he, keep, he will just keep doing what he does because he, he loves it, he believes in it, and he has a passion for it. Um, and that's, you know, three amazing, endearing qualities of who he is as a person. It just makes a, a change to see someone that's actually doing it for the right reasons. And it's because of the music. to have fun, we have to have fun. When you have friends that you've known for many, many years and yeah. and, you, and you're actually doing something you love on top of it, it's like, okay, you're doing it on your own, that's fun, but then when you add two more shots to your drink, then you really have a party. Jam, like we're jamming like, uh -huh, I know. like musicians. Yeah. We're each playing an instrument or different instruments and at any time we just jump in uh -huh, I know. and play. We're treating it the same way. We we've never discussed what this would do. Uh -huh, I know. for Tomorrowland, right? I was like, hey guys, we're going to Tomorrowland, it's a big deal, da da da. So Tomorrowland 2012 was the first ever back to back to First show, yeah. You know, a month before I texted him again, and I was like, hey guys, you know, what's the plan, really? Like, I want to know. I don't know, you know, we're just gonna play. Then one week before, I'm like, you know, you're making me nervous now. I don't get nervous, but you're, you're, you're making me nervous because we're not speaking about anything. They both replied, are you a DJ or not? Like, are we gonna play? Like, we're just gonna play, man. Cool, let's just do it. And five minutes before we got on, that's when we said, okay, so how are we gonna do this? I'm like, okay, you jump in, I'll jump in, you jump in. We had two setups and we was like, well, one of us is gonna have to jump off and, and alternate at all times. And that, that was our plan. That was like- the Five minutes before. That's it. Musically, nothing. Musically, we know each other inside and out. And we try to complement each other as much as we can. I held down, I held down to, to the 2000s actually, maybe 2005 was the last year I actually played vinyl. And the Pioneers came with the best CD players, so I was like, okay, now I can move it to CDs. I did that for a bit, and then last year was the first year I flipped to USBs. Uh -huh, I know. 
It's not overwhelming. You don't need to have 20,000 records with you. The time the club usually gives you is average of two hours. If you break that into tracks, that's 35 to 40 tracks, depending on the kind of DJ that you are. Why do I need 20,000 tracks? It's gonna confuse me, so I've narrowed it down to just like what I need and, and yeah, I, I have eight USBs now, but six of them are classics and things that that are from the last 20, 30 years, and then three of them are the updated stuff, you know, and I've been able to play freely the way I usually play it, but without looking at a record box or without somebody knocking stuff over or whatever, you know what I mean? I do miss something, but at the same time, it's, it's become so so easy to play yeah. by finding stuff so, so fast. And I'm sort of that kind of DJ. I, I play very fast. I like to layer fast and just like to have the option of scrolling and hitting the button and it's queued up and let's go. No thinking about it. What is Sneak? sound what is your sound my sound is a combination of 12 spices Amen. and you blend them together to create one so i have all kinds of different spice i have detroit techno spice i got chicago ghetto booty house spice i got all these spices blend into one you know there was no like i have to play this style of music it was like i have to entertain this crowd one way or another M my sound is the sneak sound is just a, a blend of house, man, just house music. Welcome to my first sneak barbecue of 2013. I'm hosting this uh, beautiful place called Esraco in Ibiza. And I invited a good friend of mine, Loco Dice, to uh, join me in the grill today. It's about friends, family, and food, and lots of meat. We hit you off with the underground. Hey, oh, we bring in you hot shit. Hey, 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 hey. I know Sneak through, um, wow, I met him ages ago, real randomly, funnily enough, at a barbecue in, um, in San Francisco, Mutual Friends Barbecue. I think Sneak's cooking and his skills on the barbecue match his awesomeness on the decks. He's, 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 he's one of the best. He's, he's really good on the barbecue. Uh, I think food and music, the fusion is very, very close. Uh, it's all about ingredients. It's a combination, like music is a combination of sounds and how they complement, how sounds complement each other. And food is exactly the same, um, but as well, if you haven't got your heart and soul behind it, even if it's an egg sandwich, it'll taste shit. It's all about the seasoning and obviously the passion that goes into there. Do you know what I mean? He's, um, he's very particular about the way his barbecue's prepped, all that sort of stuff. You know, everybody's got their way and Sneak definitely has his way. Music and, you know, music and food, they both please. They both make you feel good. <laughs> just because pa he's this passion for the food, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it shows the food is off the hook. Sneak, first barbecue of the summer. Amazing, a little bit hot earlier, but so was the grill and nobody complained. As soon as the meat came out, it was, it was on. So we're here enjoying it. And the sauces? Has he revealed his uh, secret recipes to you? No, you see on all that shit, there are stickers. You don't know nothing. <laughs> Even the commercial sauces he bought, they're also full of stickers, so he doesn't want to have... <laughs> it's gangster chimichurri, it's gangster steaks, that's it. Beside all that madness and that circus where we are on, on, the show, on, on doing gig after gig, and with millions of people, cool people, you need sometimes, you know, to back up a little bit, to come down, to relax. 
We want it exactly like this. This is all our friends. We know everybody by the name and it chill us a lot. And I think for the people, it's a great thing because they see D Ibiza from a different point of view. Nice to have uh, friends get together outside of the club scene and uh, a bit of socialize and just, you know, some realness, you know, food and children and, you know, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Amazing. I, I didn't think it was going to be as good as this, but uh, it was proper nice, really nice. And uh, you can tell he did it all himself. It's like he was just as passionate about his cooking as he is behind days. When I was young, I used to work in a record shop, and uh, I remember all the music was the same. And then we got strictly rhythm vinyls in, and I was like, "Heard this? I'm like, who is this guy?" Grilling back to back, it's the way forward. Space, you've got what's yeah. been uh, known as an adult's playground, Ushuaia, you know, yeah. playing for dice there. The differences of playing playing there to, well, um, to the clubs? It is different, but um, I've been exposed to it. I played for Luciano a few times last year. Yeah. For Sasha, I played there too as well. So I knew the venue and I knew what kind of crowd brings in and what sort of environment you can create. Usually the best slot is when, it, when it's darker, so that's usually 9 to 12, that's for the headliner, you know, and I would play it usually the set before, and by then people would just be coming in and finding their spaces finding and, yeah, and getting some drinks, you know, and whatever, but I've, I've been able to now go in and start that party earlier, you know, and, yeah. and, and really get them into what I'm doing, I mean, I'm just playing music at the end of the day, but I, I think people see me enjoy myself and then they enjoy themselves as well. Every gig I go, is a, it is a job for me and I treat it like a job and I love my job. So when you have that love for it and passion, you just go in and you want to do your best. When did you first meet Snake? I have no clue. That was a long time ago. I was a huge fan of his music because I, when I moved from hip hop to electronic music, it was his tunes that flipped me a little bit. And still these days, I'm a big fan of his DJing and his music. And what's this relationship you got going on with Dice? Because you guys have got some homey thing going on there. <laughs> well, we've known each other for a bit and we have a lot of respect for each other. And um, I mean, you know, his vibe is very American gangster too. You yeah. know, and wearing the hats, wearing the jerseys, very, it's, it's very American, you know. Um, he loves sneakers, that's very American as well too. Yeah. So he's bringing a bit of that, what I'm, I'm sort of, I don't know if I'm creating a name for it, but it's kind of like urban electronic. So people who Your love- genre. Yeah. <laughs> Electronic music, urban flavor in terms of dressing and very casual. You know, even with my house gangster concept, it's it's hard to 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 uh, to explain to people that it's not about being a gangster and shooting up people and whatever. That the gangster part is just it's just being fly, being fresh, being whoever you want to be at that moment and, and not having anything to to worry about whether you're trendy enough or you're wearing the right fashion you know you're sure. you just be you I think people respect you when a lot more when you're you about Ibiza um, and all the different
types of music and DJs and artists. You know, there's all the, also those magic moments, uh, those free moments when uh, you play a gig in a street in the middle of uh, Ibiza Old Town. That was so fun. That was like something I really needed. And it definitely remind me of the old Ibiza way. It's like when it was open air and nice. Um, that was a very good, uh, unexpected sort of got invited to do it and wife said, yeah, let's do it. And Your wife said yes. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was it was really, really fun. It was really fun. It was, it was good to see people in the street just walking and then stopping and partying and then just walking around or whatever. more this island is is that and for people who haven't experienced that they need to experience that they need to wander off away from the clubs and all these mega things and just find those, those really cool little parties that are still happening I loved it I would do it again anytime but I'm all for that I'm all for really intimate cool little things as well There are a lot of, uh, I'm gonna call them soldiers. There's a lot of soldiers out there that have adapted to my sound. Recently, when we hang together, the Martinez brothers, those kids got into it and the, we were sharing stories how, about how they were 13 and 14 and they were talking about tracks like Deep Inside, Louis Vega and Kenny Dope to other kids their age and they were like, what the hell are you talking about? We're talking about video games. We don't want to talk about a deep house record with a vocal on it. But you know what I mean? Like some kids get drawn to it. I want to pass that to the next generation. I want to make sure that there is a voice that said, you don't have to be this type of DJ. You don't have to be a pop star DJ, you could just be a DJ that loves the music and, and the people around you will enjoy you. Success is a bunch of numbers, you know what I mean? I guess to some people, you know what I mean? But to me, the respect that I've earned by releasing the music and, and constantly fighting for the music, I think is what keeps me going. Stick to the stuff you love. Stick really like, if you love it that much, stick to it because it's, it, it's what represents you as, as an artist and a DJ.